come back and be with us again and good to see some faces we haven't seen in a while. And I tell you what's, what's the best, just to be back at God's house. Amen. Be able to worship in spirit and truth. We want to welcome everybody out this morning. We want to pray this morning that you just be free to follow that and lead the ship of the Lord. If, listen, this is God's house. And, and, and I pray, Lord, leads you to do something and you, you follow him and you'll be blessed to be able to be here this morning. I think we all want to be anyway. Got a few announcements to make this morning. Wednesday night we'll have a deacons meeting uh, after our service. Wednesday night service will be at 7. Uh, deacons meeting will be at 8. Um, next Sunday, a week from today, we're going to start back Sunday school in some form or fashion. And uh, we're going we're to be working all that out Wednesday night with the deacons. So when you get here Sunday, we'll start at 10 a.m. on Sunday school. Anybody that wants to come, they won't. We won't have all the classes. What we're probably going to do is just uh, maybe two uh, large classes for the adults and then the youth will break up in a couple of classes also. But we'll let everybody know when they get here Sunday morning where you need to go and how we're going to do that. So that's next Sunday at 10 a.m. And, uh, and so everybody remember that. Uh, Wednesday the 16th we'll be having a conference. So everybody keep that in mind. And also, we'll get started back fully with our Wednesday night activities. And be praying about that. Um, I think the Lord's going to do a great work there. Mr. Caleb, he's excited about getting rolling with the youth on Wednesdays and doing some stuff with them. And I know he went ahead and met with them Wednesday. And you, y'all come back this Wednesday and, uh, and be with us also. And we'll get back full blown on the 16th. So, everybody, remember that. As far as prayer requests go, Brother Robert Andrews, he had to get a lot of stitches in his hand this week. So y'all remember Brother Roger and uh, Miss Betty Bland, she sprained her ankle, so let's remember Miss Betty. Uh, Eli Hoffer, he goes back to the doctor Tuesday, and they're praying that he doesn't have to have skin grafts. He, uh, I know they, they did a condiver uh, covering on it and praying that that takes, and he doesn't have to have a skin graft done. So remember Eli and uh, Tim Fred from Mason Rose, uh, Miss Kim Young, good to have Miss Kim back here with us this morning. Continue to lift her up and her dad, George. We're going to have a special prayer uh, for him before we leave this morning. Brother George, you've got um, stage four lung cancer. So uh, be praying for him. And uh, Steve Hughes, uh, Mike and Cynthia Barrett's family, her sister, daughter, and son in law, they've all got the COVID virus. Remember that family? Uh, Mary Ray and all the nursing home uh, patients and workers. Uh, Miss Libby Downs, her mother and dad had the COVID. Those in the hospital, Mr. George Jameson had surgery Thursday. Uh, Randy Phillips had surgery Friday. Randy, Randy Crump has pneumonia and COVID. And, and let's also remember Brother Samuel Rod. Uh, his, his brother Danny passed away this week. And also remember the uh, family of Stan Elrod. Stan was the uh, DNR officer that got hit and killed this week also. And I know his family was very surprised. Let's remember. Let's remember everybody. Let's do this. Let's pray for the lost and dying world out there. That, uh, that the gospel message will get to them and break their heart and lead them to a, a place of repentance and a place they can exercise their faith and be saved Amen. by the mighty hand of Jesus. And let's remember our leaders, um, our politicians, and all those. Let's remember our first responders. And, and uh, let's just lift each other up in prayer. Let's do this, though. Let's set this time aside this morning. To let our mind, let everything in our mind, just let it go today. Uh, let's clear our hearts and let's let the Holy Spirit just rise up in us. And let's worship Jesus Christ like we ain't never worshiped him. He's worthy yeah. this morning to be praised and to be worthy. This ain't about me. This ain't about you. This is all about him today. Right. So let's do that. Let's lay all the things in the world aside for a little bit. Uh, let's give him the worship, praise, and give his name. And then you know what? He's going to answer our prayers in his time and in his will. And he's going to give us the strength to go with those answers. Thank you again for being here. And I'm going to turn it back over to Brother David as they come and say, I think we got a couple of specials. Yeah, a couple things going on. Uh, one other thing on the messages are our notes uh, at the church. If you'd like to be in the praying team, we'd love to have you. We're going to make just four or five minutes right up here just to determine some times and get to make sure that we're uh, all on the same page. Uh, Ali, I think you're going to be up next to, uh, to sing for us. But, Miss Bob, you got something coming up this week? I think so. <laughs> what, what, what would that be? My birthday. Your birthday. And I got a praise on that. Yes, yeah, yesterday, my three daughters carried me to the Highlands, and I kept up with them. <laughs>
this morning.
right. Amen. You're right. Uh, listen, we all, I believe, want a great harvest. We all want to see souls saved. We, we want to see our churches prosper. We want our families to prosper. I want my children to go to heaven. Uh, and Lord, they were blessed with their grandchildren. I want them to go to heaven. Uh, I want to listen in order for there to be a harvest. Uh, they got to be some flower going. Uh, uh, listen, oh, uh, Jeremiah, uh, he's going to tell you go out there uh, and you break up the fallow ground uh, and so on. Get our hearts right. And we get out there, we start breaking up the fallow ground. 
came over there and he, he plowed my whole yard. Brought them back. Hit them in the Judas said, You ready to put side down? So I ain't got time right there. I ain't got time right now. And I just I didn't do nothing. I didn't touch it. Didn't do nothing to it. And I went out there one day. And then there's grass springing up everywhere. And I thought, Where'd that come from? But you know what God taught me? All we need to do is strike up the ground.
laborers. Turn over just a few chapters ahead in the Gospel of Matthew. Chapter number 9. Folks, we, we like to quote this verse. We like to go to the scriptures, especially when I'm under Bible time. I, I've heard it preached my whole life. The Bible says in Matthew 9, my voice is going off. Y'all need to pray for God to strengthen and pray for God to shut me up on it.
is be in our Bibles and on our knees and get out there and tell the world about Jesus. Because the TV, the news, the, the politicians, they don't want to know nothing to fix what's going on. Jesus can and will. Right. Folks, we're laborers. We, you and I, God's called us. Not only, listen, I thought about a subscription. I'm going to read this couple of verses in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs number 20, verse number 4, says this. It says, The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. Church, what we listen, amen. Everybody's got an excuse why we can't. I can't do that. I can't do this. I can't go there. I can't. I'm not, I, I can't be a witness for the Lord. Yes, you can. Folks, I, I, I promise you, I struggled this week. I, I, I begged God for a message, and, and, and right now, I'm dry as a bone. I, 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 I was like the old battlefield driver. I said, God, you need to die. I'm just going to get me. I can't get no any God. I don't have time, just in time. I always get so many. Yeah, you're right. No slugger, he says, it's too cold out. We're going to lie. It, it ain't comfortable. It, the ground's going to be hard and frozen. I'll wait till a better time. Folks, the Lord's coming back one of these days. And it's going to be too late. That we don't want to find ground broken. We got to work while it is made because the night comes, the Bible said, when no man shall work. We got to break the ground up. We got to be the labor. Don't be the sluggard. Don't, don't, don't find excuses. I look around and I'm going to tell you what my greatest fear of COVID is. It is it's not that it's going to kill me. It's not that it's going to kill me anyway. My greatest fear is, is that the people that have been born again in the kingdom of God is going to forget to come back to the house of God. They're going to use it as an excuse to stay home and do nothing for God. Oh, listen, I, I I'm not and I know that there are people that need to protect themselves. I, I, brother, I, I, I understand that to the fullest. But brother, when you, when you go and, 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 and people are gathering by the hundreds of Walmart and, and the grocery stores and, and, and the restaurants, but they say they're scared to come to the house of God because they find an excuse. That's right. That's exactly right. Drive by. I guarantee if you go to the lake right now, you'll find plenty of safe people are over in their boats right now. That's right. Up there on the trackers cutting their hay. That's right. They'll, 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 they'll be doing anything and everything. But the one thing we need to be doing, and that's worship and serving, that's following the ground. But the, that's breaking up the power ground so, so God can bless our nation again. Folks, we were a best yeah. I'm not so sure of it anymore. Mm. And it's not because God has changed. That's right. It's not because God's come unwilling to bless us. It's because we've come unwilling to do what God's yeah. asked us to do. Right. That's the nation. Yeah. We need to be breaking up the foul ground. We need land. We need listeners. We need laborers. We need some labor. I, I want to read y'all one of my favorite verses. Proverbs 14, 4. 
grace is by the strength of the ox. We're no oxen are the crib is clean. But, but, but the Bible says the, 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 the much increase is by the strength of the ox. I heard a man preach a sermon one time when it was titled, Keep the Ox and Clean the Crib. Brother, you know what we need? We need some ox in the house of God again. We need some men and women that will stand up in the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to quit sissy running around about the gospel and try to please everybody and do what God has called us to do and break the ground up. You're right. Hey, listen, hard work gets messy. That's right. You get you a few ops in this church and it's going to get messy. People are going to get mad at them. They're going to say, we can't do this. We can't do this. Don't you change this. Don't you change that. Bless you. But we need some men and women that will stand up to the cause of God and the lost soul. I don't care about your comfort in your church. I'm sorry. What I care about is we win souls to the kingdom of God. Are we do? Are we breaking the ground up? Are we being ops? Somebody will come up and clean it all up. You think it's all that clean the rest of the sermon up when I'm going to church for a while, folks. Listen, when there's no ops, so yeah, the crib's clean. We, 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 we're not doing any work. We, we, we can come here. So we can have the church every Sunday. We can come here and enjoy uh, the comforts of what we have. We, we can sing three or four songs, give a good talk, uh, give them all the call, pray for each other, love with each other, have good fellowship. And that's good. That's, that's great, guys. But that's some dirty work that needs to be done. We need to get yoked up together like no ox does. You keep no ox fed, you keep him pinned up. When you let him loose, he's ready to get out in the field. And he's ready to plow some foul ground up. He's ready to sink it in and pull it hard. Why? Because you know what? He knows that one day he's going to feast off the harvest. Mm-hmm. Right. You see no ox, he plows the ground. No sower goes out there and sows the seed. God brings the increase, springs forth. They get a great harvest of wheat. Guess who gets to eat the wheat? Yeah. Oh, ox does it. Okay. Well, we want to eat. Do we want to eat? Yeah. Do we want to eat? Yeah. Are you hungry? Folks, yeah. I'm hungry. I'm tired of our generation losing every time. Yes. I'm tired of them having to go back uh, decades ago to find a generation that was standing for the truth. I want to turn this thing around in the name of Jesus. Amen. Folks, I'm going to plow hard. I'm going to plow deep. I'm going to be an ox. Folks, I'm going to get out there and I'm going to get yoked up with the Lord and I'm going to get yoked up with y'all. And I'm going to plow the grain. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say harvest. Like we have never seen before. Folks, if I didn't our desire, what would we do? That's right. What would we do in the church if that's not our true desire? Folks, I, I, I got everything I needed as an out of your boy. God never blessed me with another blessing, so be it. So be it, it don't matter. I'm sealed. I'm on the way to glory. Can't nothing rob me of that. But the devil couldn't steal my soul if he wanted to. Amen. So what are we here for? I'm not here for me anymore. I'm not here to make my feelings feel good. I, I'm not here to, to live out the rest of my life with good health. I, that ain't what I'm here for. You, you know, from what I can understand, only two, only two of the original disciples even lived to be what they considered the other way. Only two. Only two. And them two had to go through pure, pure pain and agony and everything else to get there. So I'm, I'm not here about living a good ripe old age in comfort for the rest of my life. I want to see souls saved. Amen. I, I want to see, I want to see marriages mended. Yep. I want to see broken families put back together. I, I want to see young people given hope again. I, I, I want to see people that live to be older to be able to look back and say, God used me like I never thought he could. One day, 
it's going to be too late for me. Folks, I know I'm, I'm a lot of talk. I'm a lot of hot air. I know that. And I know sooner or later the rubber's got to meet the road. Sooner or later the ox has got to stand up, hook up, and get up there and go to plow. So y'all pray for me, but I do my part. Because God's given us the land. He's given us the listeners. He's given us the laborers. He's given us the labor to do. But it ain't going to be clean. It ain't going to be pretty. It ain't, it's going to be messy. It's going to be messy. Y'all, y'all. I actually know that. Abby one time decided she was going to be a big shower. You know, we, our family, we used to raise a pig about every year when I was a kid. But we'd take it up to my uncle's because he lived way out the country. And we put that thing as far back on the edge of the field so we wouldn't have to smell it. We, we raise that pig every year and we have a pig killing it. Big barbecue. Daddy, she wanted to show pigs. So we went and bought a pig. Put up a little bar. And once pigs think it gets on you, it don't come off. Nope. <laughs> Somebody told me, I said, you better get you a special pair of boots. I said, what are you talking about? He said, I'm talking about a special. I said, what's a special pair of boots? He said, a pair of boots, and when you're done food, that pig you throw in away, you burn it. Because it don't come out. And I thought, it can't be that bad. <laughs> and then we'd go down to Perry, Georgia, and there'd be 2,000 pigs down there in the barn. They'd be pig slop. It may not slop mess everywhere. You'd walk around in it for three days. And It'd be in your clothes, it'd be on your shoes, and when you got home, you pretty much had to throw away. I went with camping in my camper down there one time, and it took me two months to get the stench out of my camper just when we walked in there with that stuff on our clothes. It's messy. It's messy. But what we fished in one is on. It's messy. Folks, hard work's messy. About every day this past week when I went out of work, I, I, about, about 9 o'clock in the morning, they were the dry stitch flowing on me. And then you know you smell when you smell yourself. Right. And I come home and don't you, it just, <laughs> <laughs> just go straight back there. Don't, don't, don't drop them clothes, no words. Just go. That's what hard work works. Mm-hmm. Folks, let's go apply the ground. God's given us everything we need. Jeremiah said, go break up the fallow ground so we don't have to sow among the thorns. Let's go break it up. God's given it to us. All of them. <coughs> People are like, oh, no, God ain't given us this. Yes, he has. Right. I read my Bible recently. This earth is his footstool. He, he just stayed up there talking with his big toe. You're the laborers, and I'm the laborers. And the laborers going out there and sowing the word of Jesus Christ, sharing the gospel. It, 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 listen, it, it, as much as we got to think it is, it ain't judging people. It ain't hating everybody that's different from us or got a different belief than us. It, it ain't condemning people. Jesus said, we're all already condemned by the way. All of us. Not, not just the ones you don't like. You're condemned too. He said, I can't even seek and save that much lost. So go out there and sow the word of the gospel in their lives. Break up the foul of God. See that God won't send a harvest to New Bethlehem, to Carnes, to Franklin County, to Georgia, to America, to the world. Why not through us? Why can't I be Jesus' right hand? That's right. Why can't I be his left foot? You probably don't want my one but head. Why can't it be us? We look at ourselves like that song that Savannah sang a while ago. We, we look at ourselves and you can't be me. I'm not, I'm not capable. I'm not worthy. Is Jesus your Savior? The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, then you are. If He lives in you, the only thing hindering you is you. So you get that obstacle out of the way, and I'm telling you what, you, you, 
you, you'll be like old Jonathan in an armor bearer was when they got to the top of the hill. They killed them 20 men. The Bible said it looked like they plowed up a half an acre of ground with an ox. Go plow your half an acre up. Wherever God sends you. I promise you, he'll send them. He'll send an increase. There'll be a harvest. You'll be blessed. Y'all come on with your song, brother baby. If I can get you to stand, turn the page. One eighty eight. One eighty eight.
I'm saying for you, and we'll just keep plowing. Yes. We'll just keep plowing. We'll, we'll just keep seeing what God's going to do. I pray that we'll just all plow together. We'll yoke up and get it done. God bless you, my brother, this morning. Anybody got a word you want to share, testimony? You know, you got to share with the church. And you know, when you get that rock up, they still keep coming up. You sure do. Yeah. They just keep coming up through the ground. Makes me wonder, you know, how many more rocks is down there? You know? <laughs> no, but last Sunday you preached, and, and I have a hard time at work with my attitude because the way things go, we work in 70, 80 hours a week. But you know, I went to work this week and think about what you said last week about remembering the day you're saved and stuff. So now when I go to work, every time I go get that attitude, I, I go back to the day I was saved. Amen. And it made my week go a whole lot better this week and all that. Ms. Glenn, would you go ahead? Yeah, I pray the Lord for his protection. Well, he's really protecting me. And I thank him for it. Amen. Ms. Glenn, I had a little scare a little over a week ago. I'm glad that the Lord looked after her and saw her through that. I, I, saw, saw, I saw a time I'd trade you a manic for that, Dick. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Amen, brother. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. When you didn't have one, you appreciated that old front time deal. <laughs> Amen. But you know, sometimes a, a matter is the only thing that works. <coughs> Amen. Anybody else? I'd just like to ask to ask you and pray for you. We just need to all pray for each other. Amen. Uh, that we just give them strength. That's right. We don't have it every day. Not that he's not worthy to capable, but for our own way. If we get in our own way. That's right. That uh, but also the little ask for it. Pray. Ask for help. Same thing. Amen. Anybody else? Well, you keep preaching to us, Bless you too. Bless your heart. Anybody else? I'd appreciate the prayers for me and my family. This week has been four years since Josh committed suicide. It's a tough time for him. Y'all say amen. He's got some prayers. Amen. 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 <coughs> I'm not going to hold you to that, but God will. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all pray for Dennis and Ben and the whole family. God will give them strength. I, I'm going to tell this on little Dennis and embarrass him a little bit. I was talking to a man yesterday. He said, you know Dennis Bear? And I said, he's my best friend. I said, sure enough. He said, that's a good man, no Lord. Help me out a lot. He said, I moved in my house. He said, Oh, Dennis didn't know me, just showed up with two bags, big old bags of groceries. He said, We thought you might need this. Y'all pray for Brother Ben. But listen, this community's full of laborers. Right. Right. Amen. Same man told me about some men in this church that cut some trees down for him and helped him get out of a spot that he couldn't get out on his own. See, we got a bunch of ox in here, y'all don't even know it. I praise God for them. But when they need an ox in their life, let's be the ox in their life. Amen. Amen. We had a house to burn. And the roof got tore off and put back on in one day. You don't think you got the ox just look around there. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, I'd be cutting hay today if my cutter hadn't broken. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you want to tell some of you all the time? He broke that cutter, did he? <laughs> I bet that cutter will run good tomorrow. <laughs> I want to do this in closing. I, I, I want to ask the young family if they would just to come down here and join me in the altar. I'll run for you, man. Jonathan. The devil's been wearing this family out right here. Miss Kim, she had a light stroke this week, dealing with that, four of them. Kim's dad, George, he was diagnosed this week with stage four lung cancer. And they, they told him there was no cure for it, they, they could treat it. But if they don't treat it, they give them about six months to live. Danny called me and he said, Joey, can y'all just pray for me? You know, when, as an old ox, if we can't do nothing else, we, we can at least plow down Amen. knee deep, can't we? Yep. We can plow down knee deep and offer a prayer up for this family. Not only them, I know Brent, a lot of y'all are going through things. I know there's a lot of people suffering right now. Mr. Dennis, if you want to come join us on this side of the altar, I think that'd be good too. Why don't you come up here? We're going to pray for you too. I can't tell you what Brother Dennis goes through. God knows all about it. God, God's big enough to handle it. Amen. And anybody else, won't that, if you need special prayer, you want to come join us. Listen, that, this is open, guys. This is God's house and God's time. Don't let's, let's, let's break up some of the foul ground in their lives. Old, old devil, he, he loves to kill, steal, and destroy. And rob us of our joy. We're going to just pray that God's grace will smother all of that. We're going to pray for healing for Joel. We're going to pray for healing for Kim. God be with me and God with all the families. God bless you all, Sam. Yes, you can. Jonathan, we appreciate y'all too, buddy. And them girls coming. Life is what you little girls bring to the church. Amen. Some spunk. I, I struggle a lot. I struggle a lot with being a, a good dad.
what for my mom, being as strong as she is, I would have never made it. Amen. Church is family, family is church. Amen. 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 Anybody else, before we, before we have a word of prayer, even the daughter that was to say that so thankful I got my back. Let's pray. Lord, as we come to you this morning, Heavenly Father, Lord, we can't even begin to understand the circumstances in these lives, Heavenly Father. We can't begin to understand the suffering, Lord, that they're going through and the things that they're dealing with. But Lord, you, you know what it is, Heavenly Father. Lord, you know what it was to have to give up your son, dear Lord, for Lord, for the sins of mankind, and Lord, you did it willingly. God, you, you understand what sacrifice is. You, you understand what pain is. God, you understand what sickness is. And, and God, I pray, Lord, for these families, Lord. I, I pray, Lord, that you just take your arms and you put around them, Heavenly Father. Lord, as the, as the days go long and dark sometimes, Lord, and Lord, things begin to creep into our hearts and our minds, Lord, I pray that you remind me, oh Lord, that Lord, this whole life is just temporary, Lord. Lord, that there's a home waiting on us on the other side, the Heavenly Father, that's beyond our greatest imagination. It's beyond our greatest belief, Heavenly Father. And, and Lord, one day we'll live forever in eternity there with one another, Lord, and glorify and praise you forever and ever as the ages roll on. But Lord, until that time comes, Lord, Lord, we have to deal with this flesh, we have to deal with this life. Lord, I pray for strength. Lord, I pray for Kim, Lord. I pray that you, Lord, stop those strokes from happening, Lord, that you heal her body, Lord. I pray for her dad, Lord, that, Lord, you would take that cancer, Lord, and you would put it in remission, Heavenly Father, and Lord, you would let him know that you are still God on the throne. Lord, I pray for Jonathan, Lord, that you help him to be a good dad, Lord, and Lord, help those little girls, Heavenly Father, to, Lord, to keep that smile on her face and to keep the joy in her heart. Lord, I pray for Brother Dennis. Lord, I know the devil's going to want to have a field day with him. Lord, I, I know he's going to want to try to destroy him. Lord, this is, this is your child. He's my friend, Lord. And God, I pray that you strengthen him for the fight, Lord. And God, help us, Lord. We can't fight for ourselves to fight for it. God, help us to build that wall around him. Mr. John prayed about earlier. You just love her. Lord, I pray for Cindy and her mom. Dear Lord, what a blessing they've been to us, Lord. And God, I pray, Lord, that you put a hedge of protection around them. I, Lord, I know what the devil wants to do with their family, Lord. Lord, he wants to drag them back to the past. He wants to remind them of every failure and every fault. But Lord, you tell them he's a liar. But they're yours. And there ain't nothing the devil can do about it. Lord, love them like only you can. And help us to love like you love them. Lord, I know there's a whole world out there suffering. God, help us to go break up the ground. God, so that they can see some fruit in their life. I love you, Lord. Thank you for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for being who you are and what you are. Go with us, walk with us, Lord, as we leave this place to God. Lead us, Lord. God, lead us to the places, Lord, where the ground is hard. Help us to break it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now raise your right hand. Raise your left hand. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. Y'all pray to go. Thank you.